Today in this video, we will discuss about the blood supply of brain and some clinical correlations. So let's start. Why it is important to know? Because one of the most common cause of neurological dysfunction is vascular event, especially in elderly people. Before going to the detailed description, we should know how much percentage of cardiac output is going to our brain. Well, almost 15% of cardiac output is devoted to our central nervous system. Here I have drawn a picture. This big artery is aorta. Here this is brachiocephalic trunk, then left subclavian artery and right subclavian artery. Here these are common carotid artery. Parallel to this common carotid arteries, two arteries are going up. They are vertebral arteries. Now blood is supplied to the brain by two systems, carotid system and vertebrobasilar system. We will discuss one by one. Let's discuss the vertebrobasilar system first. The vertebral arteries usually arises from the posterior superior aspect of the central subclavian arteries on each side of the body. Now here you can see cervical vertebra. These processes of cervical vertebra are called transverse processes. And there are foramina also which are called transverse foramina. Vertebral arteries enter deep to the transverse process at the level of 6 cervical vertebra or occasionally uh, at the level of C7 or 7 cervical vertebrae. They then proceed superiorly in the transverse foramen of each cervical vertebra. Once they have passed through the transverse foramen of C1 which is also known as atlas, the vertebral arteries travel across the posterior arch of C1 and through the suboccipital triangle before entering the foramen magnum. Inside the skull, the two vertebral arteries join to form vasilar artery at the base of pons. Now this is the lateral aspect of head and neck. Let's see how it goes upward. Here you can see right subclavian artery. Here this is right vertebral artery and this is common carotid artery. Vertebral artery enters into the transverse foramen of six cervical vertebra and finally comes out of the C1 or atlas. Now here this is basilar artery. Here I would like to mention one important point. After entering the cranial cavity, the major arteries goes into the subarachnoid space. As we know that CSF is present in subarachnoid space. So the arteries are literally floating on the CSF. This point is very important to remember. Why? You may heard about berry aneurysm. This aneurysm commonly present in circular pulleys. If it ruptures, there will be hemorrhage in subarachnoid space. So it has a clinical importance. Now this is a simple diagram of brainstem. It has three parts, midbrain, pons and medulla. This junction between pons and medulla is called pontomedullary junction. This part is called cerebellum and this is the anterior portion of the brainstem. We have already discussed that vertebral artery is moving upward along the lateral border of spinal cord. When they reach at the lower part of the medulla, they move to the medial aspect of the brainstem and meet at the pontomedullary junction. Then they continue as a single artery called basilar artery. At this point, basilar artery divide into terminal branches. These two terminal branches move posteriorly. So what is the name of these two arteries? They are posterior cerebral arteries. Basilar arteries divide into two terminal branches just above the root of third cranial nerve roots. Now let's talk about the important branches. At the level of medulla, two branches come out of the vertebral arteries and meet together to form a single artery which descend downwards at the anterior spinal fissure or along the anterior spinal fissure. This branch is called anterior spinal artery. Next branch goes to the inferior portion of the cerebellum. 
सो दिस ब्रांच इज कॉल्ड पोस्टेरियर इन्फीरियर सेरिबेलर आर्टरी और पाइका पी आई सी ए डोंट कन्फ्यूज इट विथ पोस्टेरियर सेरिब्रल आर्टरी दिस इज सेरिब्रल हुच इज रिलेटेड टू सेरिब्रम एंड दिस इज सेरिबेलर आर्टरी हुच इज रिलेटेड टू सेरिबेलम सो दिस पोस्टेरियर इन्फीरियर सेरिब्रल आर्टरी सप्लाइज द इन्फीरियर पोर्शन ऑफ द सेरिबेलम एंड लेटरल पार्ट ऑफ द मेडुला in this diagram you can see the anterior spinal artery and there are two posterior spinal arteries anterior two third of the spinal cord is supplied by the anterior spinal artery and posterior one third is supplied by two posterior spinal arteries those two branches come out directly from the vertebral artery or from pica there are some other arteries called segmental arteries which help or reinforce the function of anterior spinal artery this added blood flow helps the anterior spinal artery to supply the lower portion of the spinal cord properly anterior segment of the segmental arteries are called anterior radicular artery and posterior segment is called posterior radicular artery this segmental arteries are coming from different arteries like deep cervical arteries intercostal arteries and lumbar arteries here you should remember the name of one important artery the artery of adam kivich it is the largest anterior segmental medullary artery it typically arises from the left posterior intercostal artery at the level of the 9 to 12th intercostal artery which branches from the aorta and supplies the lower two thirds of the spinal cord via the anterior spinal artery Great radicular artery of Adam Kivich provides the major blood supply to the lumbar and sacral cord. When damaged or obstructed, it can result in anterior spinal artery syndrome, which can cause a loss of urinary and fecal continence and impaired motor function of the legs. But sensory function is often preserved. Another important clinical point. the most vulnerable area at the anterior spinal region is t4 and l1 region if blood supply is reduced by any chance these two areas have more chances to get affected in posterior spinal area it is t1 t2 and t3 areas which are more vulnerable next branch comes out is anterior inferior cerebellar artery its origin varies person to person in some cases it comes out of the vertebral artery and in other cases from vasilar artery it supplies the anterior inferior surface of the cerebellum and lateral surface of pons next branch originating from vasilar artery or ica and moves along the 7th and 8th cranial nerve and reach internal acoustic meatus and supply the inner ear this artery is called labyrinthine artery now there are some small branches here which are called pontine artery those arteries supplies the pontine area now two branches come out of the basilar artery just below the third cranial nerve root and supply the superior portion of cerebellum they are called superior cerebellar artery so that's all about vertebro basilar system In the next video, we'll discuss about the carotid system. That's all, guys. Please like, comment, and share, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.